Hello and welcome to a new video. This is for the Zeta Matthew C curriculum. We're on lesson 25, which is about mean, median, and mode. So this lesson has to do with the idea that if we have a set of numbers or a group of numbers, then there are certain things that we might want to find out about those numbers. Typically, what we're trying to do when we look at numbers is notice like a pattern, or maybe we're like trying to uh, come up with what does what do these numbers say about whatever we're we're talking about? So if you have a group of numbers that represent like the height of everybody in your math class and you're looking at those numbers, you might want to know, well, like what is the average height of your math class? Um, because maybe that's an interesting thing. And we could use that then to say, well, maybe the average height of all math classrooms are this. Now there's some flaws to that, right? But probably before now you've you've seen the word average and mean is just kind of a fancier math word, I guess, for the term average. They actually, they mean the same thing, mean and average. Um, and so to find the average of a set of numbers, we take all the numbers we have, we add them together, and then we divide by how many numbers there are. One of the most common places that we see averages is when we talk about grades in school, that whatever grade you get in a class, um, that's come from some sort of average. A lot of times it's more complicated than just adding up all your grades and dividing by a number, um, but it's still the idea is there. Uh, another place you've probably heard the word average is like batting average, so a batting average. I think is where you you talk about like on average how well is a baseball player likely to hit the ball. I think that's what it is. There are a couple other things though that we can find that also might help us know more about the set of data. That's these other two words here. So median is if you've got the numbers arranged in order from least to greatest, the median is the middle number. And then mode is the number that appears the most. Now, if you're trying to like remember which one is which, um, we can at least with median and mode, try to relate them to like words they're close to. So mode and most are kind of close together, right? They're both four letters. They both start with M-O. So mode means most, which one appears most. Median, uh, we wanna relate to either the word middle or medium, which sounds a lot like median. Uh, if you think of medium as the thing that's in the middle of like small and large, then median is the number that's in the middle. Um, and then mean, it's just really mean to make you add up all these numbers and then divide by however many numbers there are. That's how I would remember it probably. I'm not actually trying to be mean. Um, I'm just using the word mean to have different meanings. Oh, this is so great. So on our examples, we are going to find the mean, median, and mode. And in the Matthew C workbook on their instructions, they have strategically capitalized letters in mean, median, and mode. And Word actually auto-corrected me trying to do this. So you can see how median has M and D capitalized, which is supposed to uh, relate to um, you thinking about the middle number. Mode was supposed to have the O capitalized, so mode, which is most, I don't know. And I think mean is supposed to have the A capitalized so that you think of A is average. So in case you're looking at that going like, why are random letters capitalized? That I believe is why. So our first set of data here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven numbers. And that's gonna be important for our average because we're going to end up adding these all together and dividing by seven. It doesn't matter which of these three you find first, but probably the easiest thing to find is going to be the mode because we just have to look through and say, does one of these numbers show up more than others? I'm not actually sure on this, but if, if there isn't a number that appears more than the others, I'm pretty sure that we just wouldn't have a mode. I don't think like all of the numbers are a mode, but if you had two numbers that appear like twice um, and that's the most that a number appears. I think both of those would be the mode. I should probably look this up, um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. So for mode, looking for most, in this case, there are two threes and that's more than any other number. So our mode is three. The next easiest thing to find is going to be the median because in order to find the median, 
we do need to do a little work. We need to arrange these in order from least to greatest. One of the ways that we can like make sure that we do this right is to mark out the numbers as we use them because then at the end, whatever's not marked out, we can fit in where it's supposed to go. So like if I accidentally skip a number, I won't have it marked out. And so at the end, I'll, I'll be able to tell more easily that, oh, there's a four that I didn't include or whatever it might be. So then four, five, seven, eight, and 10. So if there's seven numbers, then we basically are, are gonna move in toward the middle. We can do this a few different ways. If I had like the ability to like point and have you see, basically I would probably like go three and 10, three and eight, and just move my fingers in closer to the middle. Um, so I'll underline as I go here, three and 10 are the most outside than these two than these two. So this helps us see that five is the middle number. So that is our median. Our mean is gonna happen by adding these numbers together. I think this is really the trickiest part of this lesson and it's really more the like, um, I don't know, I don't know how good you are at adding a bunch of numbers together. Uh, we do have some strategies we can use here like saying, okay, three plus three is six plus four is 10. Um, five plus seven is 12. 8 plus 10 is 18, that might not be super helpful, but now we've got three numbers to add together instead of seven, uh, and then that might make it easier. This ends up being 40, but we're not done. We take the sum, we, we take the total of all these numbers, and we divide by seven. So we're gonna do some long division here. It's decently likely that we're gonna end up with some decimals in this lesson. And we just, we need to roll with it. Uh, it doesn't, I don't think, say what to round to. So we're just gonna round to like one or two decimal places. Seven does not go into four, but seven goes into 45 times. So we subtract 35. And then seven goes into 57 times with one left over. Like I said, we could, we could actually keep going forever because it's a seven or keep going until we find a pattern. Um, but really what I would prefer to do is just um, use this one to round the seven and say, okay, this one means that this would round down to 5.7 and just stop there because that to me seems like a good enough number. If we wanted to be super precise, we'd do more decimals. I have a couple more examples for us to do. Um, there is at least one thing that comes up here that will be kind of important and new to address that A didn't talk about. And that is the fact that if you count how many numbers we have here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10. We have 10 numbers, that's gonna make our division easier later. But how do you get the middle of 10 numbers? Because if I split 10 in half, I have five and five, there's not a middle number there in between, right? So here's what we do. We take the two middle numbers and we average them together. And that ends up being our median. So let's find our mode before I get carried away. Cause mode means most, and that's gonna be the easiest thing to find here. We have five tens, uh, which is way more than any other. So five tens. Now let's arrange this in order from least to greatest. It looks like this is 5.5. Oh. We're gonna start with 5.5 and then 7.5 and then, oh, we've got two eights and then 8.5 and then five tens. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we count in here and we've got these two, then these two, these two. You might be thinking there's definitely an easier way to do this. These two, here's, here's our middle is actually between these two numbers. So to figure out what's between 8.5 and 10, we do a quick little average of them. 8.5 plus 10, then we're gonna divide that by two. So 8.5 plus 10 is 18.5. And so we're gonna divide that by two 
2 goes into 18 nine times. And 2 goes into 5 two times. And then 2 goes into 10 five times. So 9.25 is our median because that's what is halfway between our two middle numbers. Now let's find the mean. So we're gonna have to add up all these numbers. What's cool though, is that we've got a couple of shortcuts we can take here uh, because we actually have two eights. So that's really a 16. And then how many tens do we have? We have five tens, that's really 50. So that is gonna save us some work if we realize it. If it helps you out, we need we could put point zeros here. We have five, five, and five, which make fifteen. And then we have these things to add together. Um, I'm just gonna go for it. One and five is six. Six plus seven is thirteen. Thirteen plus six is nineteen. Nineteen plus eight is twenty-seven. And then two, one, and five is eight. So 87.5 is the total of these numbers, and then we're gonna divide by 10, which uh, if you don't realize beforehand, at some point you should be like, oh yeah, there's a way to do this without actually really needing to do a lot of work. 10 goes into 87 eight times. Then we subtract and then we bring down. 10 goes into 75 seven times. 10 goes into 55 times, so 8.75 which if you think about 87.5, when I divide it by 10, it just moves the decimal over to the left one spot because it makes it a 10th of what it was. Um, it's 8.75. So you should notice that um, the mean and the median should be, I wanna say relatively close together. It kind of depends on our numbers themselves. If our numbers are really close together, the closer our numbers are together, the closer the mean and the median should end up being. Um, the the wider the range of numbers, then the farther they have a possibility of being. So if you get for the mean on this one like 20, well, that doesn't make any sense because actually our biggest number here was 10. So that's kind of a way that you can use to help check yourself. All right, C. Just five numbers here, but these numbers are kind of big. I imagined this being like grades. Um, and so you may or may not really do much with grades, either because you're doing homeschool or because you're, um, you know, not old enough maybe for grades to be super important, and that's fine. Um, but this is how, if we had five grades and we were trying to find an average, this this is gonna help us know how to do that. We do have a mode here because 85 shows up twice. And then there are five numbers, so we're gonna be able to find a nice middle once we've got this arranged from least to greatest. And then let's see, five numbers. So these two, these two. Here's our middle of 85. Interesting, our mode and our median are the same. I wonder what our mean is going to be. Um, so let's add these together. It's nice that these end in five because whenever we're doing this, we can say we've got four fives, so that's 20, carry our two. Um, there are a couple different ways we could do this. Like we could group these eights together and say that's 24. We actually could make the two and the seven turn into nine and then use these two nines to get 18. Um, and then that means that this is 42. So this is 420. We're gonna divide this by five, which should go nicely. Five into four is zero times, five into 42, eight times. 5 into 24 times. So our average or mean is 84. If it bothers you that the two of these answers were 85 and one was 84, I'm sorry. That's just how it goes. The likelihood that the mean and median will be the exact same is not super likely. They should be relatively close, but they probably won't be the exact same. So that is the gist of mean, median, and mode. And this is something we'll definitely see again later in math. Um, this definitely has some application to real life because when we talk about statistics or studies, a lot of times 
averages are involved in that or other ways of looking at data are involved in that. So this is a nice like, um, maybe not intro, maybe you've seen these before, but I think it's an, a nice um, building of our foundation on, on what we can do with numbers whenever we have them. So thanks for watching. If you aren't already subscribed to my channel, please do and give the video a thumbs up to tell me that you liked it. So thanks so much. Bye.